<clears throat> Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, whoever, wherever you are in this place in the world. Uh, this is Faris Al Hajri, PhD. Am uh, presently I'm. In Virginia and particularly in Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center where our Hakwa Oneness is located and Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center has won the 2010 International uh, Research Park by AURP which is Association for University Research Park so we are excited, we are so glad to be in this location because of the many privileges that Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center is connected with the Virginia Tech Polytechnic and State University, in addition to the Edova College of Osteopathic Medicine. So there is what we're doing as we walk in two projects, in two dis different, I mean, two different tasks. Task number one is to conduct clinical research study on the effectiveness of HAQUA revitalized therapy. In addition to uh, stage two or vision two is to conduct, uh, uh, to turn an idea into a product. How to can, we can do a project related to wellness, uh, health and wellness in, uh, as a whole. Uh, this topic will be about uh, the coronavirus outbreak and a huge change in the social life. Why? Why we connect coronavirus with the social life? As everybody could realize that the impact of coronavirus is so, so detrimental. On one side, unfortunately, irrevocably, we see huge impact of this uh, pandemic that has uh, affected so much of the business. Airports have closed, the shopping malls have closed, a lot of business have closed, have shut down, and uh, uh, so a lot of uh, impact on this side. That is, uh, also we see stock markets have a complex, you know, collapse. So one side we see this mega change, a big impact on the world economy. In addition to, unfortunately, so many people have died, many, especially with the medical issues, medical issues, that means people with some form of ailment, chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, whatever you call it, all these cholesterol, elevated cholesterol, CVD, cardiovascular diseases, all these diseases that people have been diagnosed with, they've been living with these diseases and they became drug dependent. They depend on drugs, medication, to maintain their health. But what happens is that they, they became the prime victim. And the healthy people, we could see like almost 80% of people infected, 80% could, I mean, people who have been infected, 80% uh, have been found to be uh, not affected because they're healthy. But the 20% of the unhealthy people with medical condition, that's where the problem is. They end up being in a quarantine and uh, some of them, um, I mean, they have to be completely isolated. So, so on another side, we see people now have been forced to stay home. People have been forced to do their job at home. So l low movement, and as more people spend more time in their homes, we could say that on the other side, we could see the positive vibe of the impact of the social life. So people start to realize that, uh, yeah, uh, being socially involved to understand the role of everyone in the social life, those with family, with relatives, they go back with parents, back to with the children, spending more time for, with children and, they, and the spouses, means men spending more time with women, their wives and, and vice versa. Women have been having more time with their husbands. So we could see it on the other side, there's a kind of a family social life being brought back together to people. And also people's becoming more kind of uh, spiritually attached 
More people understand that there is existence of a will being, I mean, a, a, a great being. That great being uh, is God Almighty. And many people believe, me myself, because when I look at my finger, I say, who has made these fingers to be like this? Somebody is controlling this finger. Somebody great who controlled, who made these fingers to function, and so on with the entire body. How does my body function? When I study the human biology, how does the, the, the biologic system of our body, the brain system, the nervous system, every part, every organ of our body, we realize that it's more beyond than just only go out and search for work, search for income. We became more workaholic, spending more time, excuse me, spending more time to become productive in addition that we became at the race of productivity. Everybody want to compete, everybody want to do better. So we became a workaholic. We spend more time outside, more than the time we could spend in social. Social here it means the family time, socially with the society, so understand the social value. So I believe that uh, uh, after this coronavirus, and I hope that uh, this pandemic will be eradicated very soon, there is a huge impact. People will go back to understand that social life is very important. So this is what I used to believe, that the true success does not come from outside in, whereas the true success and sustainable success comes from inside out. What does it mean? Inside is the social life, is the family. Outside is what we do outside. Means, you know, whatever, I mean, so it starts from family, start with the relative and family together, then you come to a society, then you come to the, the government, you come to country and continent and so on. And so on with your workplace, when you, whatever you do, what is the, whatever your profession, uh, an engineer, you're, um, doctor, you are I mean, physician, you are uh, astronaut, you are a professor, whoever you are, you are a business person. So whatever you do outside, you run to make money, you run to make success. But do, let's take one minute silent to realize we have been running after making money. That's nothing wrong. We've been running to compete, to do better, to become better in our job. To some be, want to become high, I mean, getting more higher, higher position, so that more position you have, that means more income. So whether you are a salary dependent person or you're independent, whatever the field you're working, being workaholic so much, compromising the social life, compromising the, the time that you need to spend with your loved one, that, I could say it's a time change. Now we are entering a complete different change in this, in this world. So let's hope that this pandemic will be eradicated as soon as possible so that we don't see more damage. And I believe at this time, as more people, once it's eradicated, now people will understand the value of social life. When I, once I was reading the book of Albert Einstein, he, the final page of the book, his picture is there in bed. That was the last time he's, he's about to die. And uh, he said, I was running to become global successful, gl successful globally. I managed to earn five Nobel Prizes. But whereas the fact in social life, I failed. Why? Why did he say like that? When I read his story, at the beginning of his story, it shows that he was a German a citizen, German citizen, and he, as a scientist, he was experimenting, doing a lot of experiments. But during the Second World War, Hitler, what he did, he started to imprisonment, imprisonment uh, all these uh, prominent figures, scientists and so on. So he ordered to kill them. This is the fact. Hitler. So what happens is that he ran away. But before that incident happened, since he was a scientist, he, I mean, the, he, he divorced his wife. I don't know what could be the reason. They did not say the reason of the divorce, but probably the, his wife could not, uh, you know, could not resist that her husband does not have any time with her. And more especially when she, she delivered the baby, a girl. 
So he got divorced at the age his daughter was two years old. By the time he left Germany, he was running away for his safety because Hitler wanted to kill, you know, it was imprisonment and kill the scientists. He ran and I think he went to Belgium or France, something like that. Then CID or the spy, they started to follow him. So what he did, he ran to, he flew to the um, United States of America. When he flew to America, of course, the land of opportunity, he got an opportunity. So he managed to work hard and hard, hard. So he actually, he had another woman after that. When he left, he divorced his wife. The woman who was with him, working with him in the laboratory, doing all the experimentations. So he went with his wife, the second wife, or the woman he married uh, from his first wife. He left to, with her to the United States. So he worked hard. To, he managed to, earn five, to, to, to win five Nobel Prize. But with the impact here, he did not realize that he left his daughter. She was two years old, and he never see her. You can imagine how many years have passed. He never knew where about of his daughter because the daughter was with the mother, the first wife. So this is the problem. What happened? I say, oh yeah, we need to start to understand that the true success is in out, not outside in. So build a social life. A true society starts from family. Let's understand that our women, our mothers, our, and they are also the mothers of our children. They, are, they sacrifice a lot. When I try to, try to understand, jump into the soul of mothers and women, I feel, and when I look at it, the same thing happened with animals, females, you will realize that throughout their life, they engage to protect their family. They engage to make sure that their spouses, I mean, their husbands and their children, they are fed very well. I mean, they cook nice, they do everything, they make the house beautiful or, or, or you know, uh, decorated. They are, even though some, I mean, women are now becoming, uh, going out to work, uh, they're becoming uh, in the workplace, but still they go home, they have the second home, uh, work waiting for them. That is the family. They still work hard. That's why you see these days, men and f f women, they need to help each other. So at home to doing the homework and do home things and so on, cleaning looking after the children, educating the children. But still you see the women who are the mothers, who are the, our wives, they, they sacrifice a lot. That has made me to understand why men are not the one who became pregnant. Why particularly women are the one who become pregnant. For the fact is that woman can tolerate the pain. And that means she can still tolerate the challenge of life. So let's understand that the impact of women means women are the pillar of the society. Women, they're the mothers, they're our sisters, they're our, they are your daughters, they are, I mean, they, they are they, these are the pillar of the society. And paying tribute to them, we can build a better life. We can become who we want to be. You can, you can be a best scientist, you can be a best phys, a, a physician, you can be a best businessman or businesswoman, but go back home to realize that having time for your children, spending time for your children. And that's not too little, too late. So when they grown up, they have that spiritual attachment with their parents. They remember, they reminisce the past to remember that their parents have been playing a big role to take care of them. So that's the best thing that the social life is so important. So I believe that life is changing. So one side we talk about the social life, but the other side, we talk about the discovery of aqua revitalized, hot water therapy. Let me grab another gob. This may sound weird, am I right? It may, it, okay, don't, don't stop there. Just continue with me, please. Why do I connect hot water with social life? First of all, is that when I proclaim severally that hot water is the essential, the fuel of the body to revitalize, that's why I call it aqua revitalize. To revitalize means to reinstate yourself in the, back in the state of what? Of all the four essential uh, aspects of life, of health. Number one, the physical health. Number two, the emotional health. Number three, the mental health. Number four, the 
spiritual health. So social life falls under, so, uh, under emotional health. So what makes human to be out of control, losing the understanding the value of social life is something to do with the, the fuels that are depleted from our body. And these fuels were the essentials, the moment when the human being at the first creation and growth, it starts in the womb of the mother. And the mothers, they carry this. That fuel in the womb of the mother, the amniotic fluid, is exactly hot water. Several times, many times, we repeatedly keep on saying, proclaim that amniotic fluid actually is hot water. Because it actually, the percentage of the water is 99% water. The temperature is 37.5 degrees Celsius. You can convert that to Fahrenheit, which is 99 point something, or 0.7 like that. So, so uh, you could realize that it's a hot water. And why hot water? Why not cold water? Why not warm water? Okay, we can say God's power. Okay, because there's no doctor, there's no physician, there's no human being who injects that liquid, which is the hot water in the womb of the mother. For the reasons that water, since it's composed of uh, two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of, of oxygen, so oxygen and hydrogen, so you have what? When it says hot, it's hot. That means there's energy. So you talk about four. You talk about water, oxygen, hydrogen, energy. And the covalent bonds of hydrogen and the oxygen, they do not start to split when in the womb of the mother, for that water, unless there will be an energy involved. So that energy, which is the heat in the form of energy, that heat is enough to allow the, ch the baby, the, f the fetus, to grow from one cell exponentially till the time the child is born is composed of 50, uh, around uh, uh, 50 to 70 trillion cells. And an adult is made up of 100 trillion cells. So you can imagine that we need these fuels. So I resemble water, hot water, as the fuels of the body, the fields, the four essential elements of life. Fields, F, E, E, L, apostrophe S. Why put S? Many, many fields. So the fields, these fields found in hot water are the fuel, the body's fuel. So one side you have the body, and the other side you have the fields. And these fields, are the fuels. Resembling, take an example of a vehicle. A vehicle is a man-made. So it runs on its fuels, man-made fuels. Those fuels, I coined them fuels, I coined them fuels because it, altogether there are many fuels in the vehicle. You have the brake oil, you have the engine oil, you have the coolant, you have the, the transmission oil, you have the fuel that runs the, you know. So all this together, all together, when you put them together, I can, I, I coined them as the fuel, the vehicle fuels. But these are man-made fuels, so they are artificial fuels. To make that artificial body, which is the vehicle, man-made, to run. Am I right? So the human body, hey, listen to me here. The human body is not a human made. You're not supposed to be touched. The moment we are not created, we are given the chance to the evolution of a technology, the advancing technology, knowledge and science or whatever in all field, is for us to invent, to explore, to discover, but not to touch the human body. Nobody should touch you. My means when I say nobody should touch you, is that the one who created you, Almighty Lord, I can say, of course, the one who created you, or some atheists, they don't believe God exists, they say, 